Hello, and welcome to episode six of Becoming Bob. I'm Alex, and in this episode, I'll be painting along with episode six of The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. Just starting out here, I've got a black canvas, as you can see there, which I painted with black gesso and allowed that to dry. I then put on a layer, which was a mix of Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown. I mixed that in with a little bit of linseed oil, like I did last time, to help with the blending and to allow for that wet-on-wet -wet technique. Now going in with the one-inch brush, and you can see I'm using crisscross strokes. Let's put some titanium white on there to kind of put some light in the sky. In this painting, that light's going to be moonlight. Trying to get it spread out real well. And then going with my two inch brush to further blend that. I'm starting to get the hang of the different brush motions, but the crisscross motion is still kind of a tough one. I really have to think about what I'm doing with the brush to get those X's to work for me. It's a nice back and forth just to bring everything together. At this point, I'm now bringing the two inch brush, or the one inch brush, excuse me, back up, loading it up with some white and going right in the middle there. Really pushing that in, grinding that paint into the canvas, and just making a nice circle there, which of course will be the moon. Taking my knife and scraping that off. I was really kind of worried that I had scraped off too much and made my lines too abrupt there. But once I got it blended, I think it looks pretty good. I'm now going in with my fan brush in a mixture of Van Dyke Brown and Prussian Blue. Putting in some nice thin clouds there up in the sky. Trying to make them good and bumpy and wavy, natural cloud looking. Just adding a few floaters in. I'm washing off my fan brush there. The fan brush is kind of harder to clean than some of the larger brushes. You can't really beat the devil out of it like you can with the two inch brush. And you really kind of have to wipe it off, especially if you're going in with a much lighter tone like I am here. I'm mixing that same mixture of the Van Dyke Brown and Prussian Blue, but I'm mixing it in with the white, the uh, titanium white there, to put some highlights there on my clouds. really give them a 3D appearance. And it just makes them show up so much better on that dark canvas. You can see there on those clouds I'm putting the highlights on the top of the clouds. Here for the clouds that are above the moon. Let's see, then I'm going to put the highlight on the bottom of the clouds. Kind of further show 
where that light source is in the painting. Switch out for my fan brush now. Do that two inch blender. Just kind of hypnotizing everything into the background, as Bob says. Just hypnotize it a little bit there. Now I've got my knife out. Mixing together another really dark mixture of the blue and brown. And now going in with a nice big dark mountain there you can see as I'm putting it in there I've kinda got a wiggle to my hand and that was intentional when I was doing that but after seeing the results on this mountain in particular I think I'm gonna try and do it a lot more um, straight at least for this darker background color It'll give the mountain a much more solid appearance, I think, than um, it does when I kind of use this wavy stroke. And back in again with that two inch brush. And actually, speaking of uh, two inch brush, I found a great resource online recently, uh, twoinchbrush.com. And it's a community of Bob Ross fans, such as myself, uh, many of whom are trying to paint along with Bob, just like I am, and sharing their experiences uh, for the world to see. Um, you can see paintings done by all sorts of people, including myself, on there. Um, and you get to see a little bit of their experience with the paintings. Uh, this is where I learned to start mixing some of the linseed oil in with my uh, paints that I you know, put on first if I'm putting on like with the brown and blue for this painting. Um, I would definitely encourage you to check it out, 2inchbrush.com. Um, I've already got a few people from there who've come over and checked out my channel and uh, it's great to have people coming over here and seeing it and hopefully I can send a little traffic back to back to 2inch brush as well. So uh, if anybody involved with 2inch brush is watching this, thanks for coming over and checking out my channel. Just going in now with a nice lighter color there, putting some snow on the mountains. Once again, I am using that wavy stroke, which for the highlights looks pretty good, but I think for the base color I want to use a little bit more a little bit more of a direct type of a stroke. Picked up a little bit more of the blue there. Just going back in, putting in some shadow areas now. And because this is a moonlight painting, those shadows and highlights are a little bit less pronounced. Which, of course, is why in this painting I'm really only using three colors the white, the Van Dyke brown, and the Prussian blue. But as you can see, I'm creating quite a few different tones just using those paints. And of course, there's a little permanent red there on my palette as well, but I won't use that until the very end for my signature. Going back in now and just trying to kind of add some mist at the base of those mountains there. And at this point I really wasn't feeling real great about this painting. I was feeling really good about the sky when I finished that, but at this point with the mountains and I was blending everything, I felt like it was blending too much and just getting really sloppy there. But um, as I've kind of come to learn, the best thing to do is just to keep on painting and stay positive. And the end result usually turns out uh, much better than you think it's going to. I think that's kind of true for life as well.
going in now with that one inch brush and in front of my misty area tap it in some dark area for a tree line and you know like I said I wasn't happy with how the mountain turned out but right after finishing that up I now get a chance to take out some of my aggression right there on the canvas and that's a good thing my you know getting a little angry and really kind of jamming that one inch brush in there um, you know produced a good result for me here and it got that frustration out of my system so that now when I'm going in with the highlights and I need to focus a little bit more on creating a forest of individual trees and not just a blurred together mass of white um, it allows me to focus on that better that's just kind of the magic of Bob Ross right there. Now this episode took me a long time to get produced and put out there on YouTube. Um, when I was working on this, we've been going through a moving process and um, it's uh, been a lot more hectic than I had hoped. I'm hoping now that we are moved though, I can get a more permanent setup established and start producing videos faster than I even was before. Going in there with the two inch and pulling it down and going across to create a nice watery reflection. I'm hoping with my new studio to spend a little bit more time getting the lighting right, a little bit more time on perfecting my camera angles, and I'd like a little bit more of a permanent sound recording booth. Um, right now when I'm recording this voiceover, I'm sitting in basically a uh, fort that I've made here, which uh, is a bunch of cushions and pillows and blankets and just anything I could find that would work for sound deadening material. The result's pretty good, but it's kind of a hassle to have to build this fort every time I want to record a voiceover. You can see there I'm using the knife now with some white paint. And at this point I've mixed in some liquid white because I'm going over quite a few layers. Um, actually, I'd mixed in liquid white a ways before this. Um, but because of the layers of white, um, you just kind of have to keep thinning it out. Cutting in a water line along that snowy bank there. And I tried to keep that water line a little varied. The tendency, at least for me, when I'm trying to cut that water line is just to make a straight line across. And that just doesn't look natural. It looks very painted, I guess. Cutting in some sticks and trying to be deliberate about those placements as well. Which I guess at that distance I'm really cutting in more tree trunks and entire trees. And now with the fan brush, mixing up another nice dark color there. You go in and well, I was saying to go in and kind of tap in a few evergreens. And yeah, my evergreens are coming along. I'm getting better at these, but I still feel like they're wider than I wish they were. I'm, I feel like whenever I press down with that fan brush, I'm getting a lot more uh, paint on the canvas than I'm aiming to, and it makes the tree look a lot fatter. Um, I'm sure if I, as I get more practice, I'll be able to do those trees better. But that's one of the things about this uh, Becoming Bob journey that I'm going on here is that um, these videos are all the painting I'm doing. I'm not practicing outside of these. Um, that's the, you know, part of the whole purpose is that you can see uh, every brush stroke, every bit of my uh, growth along this, uh, along this path. So, um, you know, cut me a little slack and uh, just understand that some of this stuff uh, may take me a little while to 
completely get the hang of. this side making a much bigger tree up towards the front we're gonna have another little peninsula there but since we were using the fan brush already I guess Bob decided we'd go ahead and put that tree in there and you can see that one uh, in particular compared to some of my earlier ones is much skinnier and taller looking like I said, I am getting better, but I still have a long way to go. And giving him a little friend there. Because everyone needs a friend. You know, why just have one when you can have two friends there with him? Put another little one there. When you have two trees, Usually get more before too long. And nice big one over on this side to bring up into the foreground and push the mountains and the other trees back into the back. Give the painting a lot more depth by adding layers. Because I'm working with dark paint here, I couldn't add in that liquid white, so I'm going over some of the other layers. It was um, kind of hard to get the paint to transfer real smoothly, but because there was dark paint behind it, it didn't look as bad as it might have if it was on a white canvas. See, I picked up a little white paint there, and that's okay. Trees come in different colors, so if you pick up a little different pigment, and the tree ends up a little different tone, that's fine. That's how it works in nature, too. And I'm just picking up a whole bunch of a kind of lighter blue tone there a shadow tone that I'm putting in to create a large area of foliage there in the dark shadow bits. Create a realistic looking shape for that little peninsula there. And then mix it up a little bit more to bring in on the left side. Again, pushing those trees back now, creating more layers and more depth for the painting. And I'm just bringing that along, and this really kind of defines where my water is, too. Snowy highlights now. Trying to do my best to create individual bushes or shrubs, I suppose is the correct term for that. Having to mix in a little extra liquid white there to make sure that the paint's transferring smoothly for me. Still got a long way to go with this technique too, but compared to some of my earlier paintings, I can definitely see some improvements when it comes to creating these brushy areas in the paintings. And that area down there is going to end up being some reflections, so not worrying quite as much about getting all 
the highlights in there. You can see I'm pulling that down now to make those reflections nice and watery. And I picked up quite a bit of pigment here and you can see when I did that it kind of put a, a line of white where I started my pulling. Um, that was just another time when I was feeling it really kind of made a mistake in the painting, but once again, we don't make mistakes. It's just a happy accident, so you just have to keep going, uh, especially if you're trying to keep up with Bob like I am. Um, by this point in the painting, I'm usually a couple minutes behind him, and so I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing next, while at the same time trying to do what he just did. Heading in that snowy bank now. And cutting in some sticks and twigs. And I notice now that I've gotten a few hairs from my one inch brush stuck there and getting hairs off with a brush is a lot easier than getting hairs off with a knife, as you can see. I'm scraping away at that paint too as I'm trying to get those off, but you know what? Cut a few things in there and you couldn't even tell. It's just one of the beauties of this technique. Making corrections and fixing things like that is just so easy. It's fun. I like cutting in those sticks and cutting through the white to create dark and cutting through the dark to create light. Um, kind of fun to watch the contrast change depending on what I'm cutting through. Let's see, just adding that shrubbery highlight in there. Switching back out for, I believe, the knife, which I'm going to put in some more snow here. Blowing and drifting all across there. Yeah, this is one of those cold paintings where Bob says, you, as you're painting it, you really got to put on a parka. So you can just feel those cold tones. Put them on the canvas. And like I said, I am running a couple minutes behind Bob, so I do know what's coming next in the painting. Um, also, I do have started pre watching these um, because, as I learned, Bob does like to uh, mention things later in the episode that um, you kind of need to know when you start the painting. It to work quite right, but being a couple minutes behind him does allow me to anticipate a little bit more what I'm going to be doing next, which in this case is going in and removing some paint here. As you can see the shape of the paint I'm removing. You can probably guess what's coming next. That's right, it's going to be another little cabin there. Scraping the paint off like that does two things. It makes it easier for the paint to stick when you put the paint on for the cabin, and it also helps block out the space and helps you get kind of your um, angles right before you go in with the actual paint. And let me tell you, this paint was going on thick right here. It was like I was icing a cake, and um, yeah, especially being right up on it and just kind of seeing those big globs there I was uh, not feeling very good about this particular cabin yeah, just 
All that white paint there, globbing on the roof. You know, it just... As I'm putting it on, it's like, how can I even get detail on this thing? It's just a, a big brown and white mess. Just trying to add some age to the wood there, and it just... You know, it just looking messier and messier. Everything I try to do to make it look better, it just kept making it look worse, but... You know, it's... The magic of Bob, though. Just gotta keep on working on it and following what he's doing. You know, if you think you have too much paint and he says to add a little bit more, just, you know, go ahead and do it. That's what I'm doing here, and... I feel like that really helped change my roof line, which... Made the whole thing look a little bit more correct with the perspective there in the painting, and... You know, I started feeling a little bit better about it. Clean off my knife there and scrape out a space for the door and kind of go in and define where the edge of the roof is and the corners and some of the wood slats. You know, once I'd done that and got that cut in, it, it was still kind of messy, but Definitely was a cabin. And as I work on more of these and get more experience with the knife, you know, I'll just be able to handle that icing process that much better. Now going back in with my brush shadow color, the one inch brush on the base of the cabin to push it back into the hill there. along the bottom there to make kind of a, a fuzzy break, make it look like the painting continues along off the canvas there. And of course just mixing up some liquid white and titanium white to put in those highlights. Yeah, I'm getting towards the end here, so go ahead and say thanks a lot for watching. Um, it's always a pleasure to do these paintings, and it's great to know that there's people out there watching these and getting something out of it. Uh, like I said, some people from the twoinchbrush.com site have uh, started coming over and watching the videos and you know, hearing their experience, getting to see their paintings. Um, it's great to know there's a community of people out there doing this, uh, and it's, it's just great to be a part of it. Um, as always, a uh, special thank you to any of those who s supported me on Indiegogo. I wouldn't be here without your help, and uh, it's just, it means so much to me to know that there's people that um, wanted to support me in this project. It just uh, really makes me feel like this is something people want to see. Just adding some highlights to my larger evergreen trees there. Kind of add that final touch to the painting. Or, I guess, second to final touch. Because, as with all of these paintings, the final, final touch is going in with that script liner brush and a little linseed oil and permanent red and put your mark on there. Now, I came in here and I was going to go ahead and try and decide where to put it. Always kind of a tough decision, and I decided to go with the left side on this one. So thanks again for watching. This has been episode 6 of Becoming Bob. Uh, episode 7 will hopefully not take as long to get out. Um, like I said, hopefully here at my new location with the new studio, things will go a lot smoother. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.